We started talking last week about becoming aware of our true identity as a believer. And the reason I'm talking about this is because what we're living in the world right now, people are totally losing their identity. They're, they're trying to find their identity in anything to the place that men are going, I think I'm a girl. And, and they're teaching in our schools in different provinces in this nation that there's no such thing as boys and girls anymore. As a matter of fact, there's one lawsuit. I know that John is on that with a, a, a young girl who's, I believe, in grade six or either six years old and in grade one um, who was told by her teacher, well, there's no such thing as boys and girls. Well, she likes to be a girl. So she went home and told her parents and said, my teacher is telling me that I can't be a girl. Why can't I be a girl? So the parents uh, filed, uh, uh, I think, to this to, uh, civil uh, liberties, what do they call them, the Human Rights Commission. They filed a, a complaint against that school and that teacher because their daughter wants to be a little girl. So wait, you guys, all of a sudden, we're living, if you've been around for 30, 40, 50 years, we're looking at things that we never looked at before ever. We're looking at things that are like, excuse me, what? Just, just wait. And, and that, that, that has been the reason that I thought if we don't establish who we are as believers in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to talk about the, I'm going to talk about the color thing next week. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Black Lives Matter thing. And, and, and what, what the perspective is. Uh, it, it's very, very interesting when, when you look at what Paul said in 2 Corinthians. He said, henceforth we know no one after the flesh. And then he goes on to say this, that we know not Jesus after the flesh either. And those scriptures give us, and I'm going I'm to give you a little bit more today, but, but we have to be able to have answers for things that are biblical. I mean, look around in this place. We have every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Why? Because we focus on who we are in Jesus Christ, that we're brothers and sisters, that, the, that we're the children of the king. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't matter your nationality or your race. None of that matters. Right. What matters is who you are in Christ and our ability to love each other that way through any perceived racial problems, through, through issues. We help each other and walk with each other through those things because we are all colors and we can walk together because Jesus made us one. There's no Jews, there's no Greeks. So we're going to talk a little bit about that next week just so that we know, okay, how do I respond when those kinds of things come? I wanted, to, I wanted to, to influence or to, to impact you, pardon me, with this statement that we don't just get saved and do our best for the rest of our life. There is so much more. God's plan for us is to walk in life and life more abundantly. Yes. What do you do with scriptures like this? Well, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. What do you do with a scripture like that? What does it mean? Well, you just get saved, you know, and he's greater. Hallelujah. Or does it actually mean something? I chose years ago that when I read something in the book that I said, okay, God, this is you speaking to me, so I take this as your word and it's true. I take it as I would the word of a doctor or a lawyer or somebody who's a specialist that knows more about something than I do. And the funny thing is, when I started to do that, it started to work. Amen. What about this? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, that only applies to some parts of your life. Well, he should have said that. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. So I'm reading these things many, many years ago, and I'm, I'm starting to study. And I'm seeing that these things offer me a walk in life that has an element of victory that I never knew was available. That the, the element of victory for the believer was something that just exp it exposed me. I thought, you mean I can live like this? You mean I can live like Jesus did? I can grow into that image? And I can do the things that he did. And you know what? He said when he left, he said, go into all the world, preach the gospel. Lay hands on sick people and they'll recover. We have that happen here. Pastor Clive did that a number of Sundays ago and we were away and called out certain things and got testimonies of people that had been healed from that. We have healing rooms every second week. Why? Because we believe God wants to heal people. And if we'll just lay hands on more people, more people will get healed. He said, you can cast out devils. I can't wait to talk on that one. I can't wait to talk on that one because it's what we've been made. So when I, when I got a hold of that, I said, Father, I can walk in something that's amazing that I didn't know was possible. Colossians says this, the new man is renewed in knowledge Amen. after the image of him who created him. So that means that the image of God that's on the inside of you that I'm going to show you about today is brought forth by your knowledge of that. Yes. 
The new man is renewed in knowledge. So knowing, I, I wrote this down, knowing what God has made me, makes me. When you don't know what God has made you, you won't be it. Let me keep going. We said last week that as a result of Adam's sin, all of us were separated from God because of that sin nature in our spirit. And I made a statement that some of you looked at me with eyes about that big when I said the first thing that God did when we received Jesus as Lord as he killed that old spirit. First thing that happens when you receive Jesus, God kills that old sin-ridden spirit because the devil has a hook on anything that has sin in it. So in order to set you free from any claim of the devil, God killed that spirit that was a sin ridden, that, that was ridden with sin because of Adam's sin. In Romans 6, we've read it for many years. We, it was scriptures that we thought were talking about water baptism. But it says that we were immersed into death with Christ. It doesn't mean, it's not talking about water baptism. The same word, baptizo, is the word immersion, which means I was put into Christ, and I emphasized that with you last week. I got a big guy to stand here and then put two or three other people behind him because they got put in Christ. And so in the spirit realm, all the spirits see is Christ. Amen. Now, when you step out and, and you're driving on Deerfoot Trail and you cuss somebody out, the spirits of anger know, oh, well, that's not Jesus, because Jesus doesn't give people the finger when he's driving. And so they, you expose yourself to things from the enemy when you and I step out. But thank God, he said in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to, to forgive us and to cleanse us. You know what the cleansing does? It puts you right back in. Amen. It's not like you get out, but it puts you back in where you're covered. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Jesus. 